Today we're going to be working on chapter 6, lesson 7, which is equivalent expressions. That is going to be in part 1. This will be part 1 of this video segment um, because I'm trying to make the videos a little bit smaller. So if you're in my class, then you're going to be following along on textbook pages 495 through 496. So even if you don't see the textbook page that I'm working on, please know that I'm going through the textbook in order um, on those pages. So when I write, you should be writing in that general area as well. That's what I'm checking for when I check your homework the next day. All right, let's get started. All right, so here on textbook page 495, you see the vocabulary startup, and it says, when addition or subtraction signs separate an algebraic expression into parts, each part is called a term, okay? The numerical factor of a term that contains a variable is called a coefficient, and a term without a variable is called a constant. Like terms are terms that contain the same variable, such as x, 2x, and 3x. So we've already talked a little bit about this in our last section when I explained to you that you could not combine 8x plus 8. So that's what that like terms is talking about. So let's go ahead and take a look at the okay, example. My apologies, it's a, a live recording, so I apologize for the di disruption. Um, all right, let's go ahead and look at the example that they've given you here. So they've got 3x plus 7 plus x. So you have three different terms, 3x, 7, and x. 3x and x are called like terms. So notice that right there is like terms. So it says to label the graphic organizer below. So it says the terms 3x and x are like terms because they both have the same variable x, which means they can be combined. So they, that's an E, can be combined. All right? So then it says to label the graphic organizer um, up below. So let me see if I can get a little bit smaller of a pen here. All right, so it says um, right here, so these three are going to be called terms. And the constant is going to be the 9. So that is called a constant. That is not a very thin line. Hold on, let's try. There we go. Let's try that see if it works a little better. And then the 4n and the 2n are going to be called like terms because they both contain n. So see that n and that n there? That means that they are like terms. All right, still on textbook page 495, if you look at the bottom where it says real world link, that's where we're at right now. It says Andrew's mother gave him a computer game and $10 for his birthday. His aunt gave him two computer games and $5. So let's go ahead and get our highlighter here for a second. Can make that guy. All right, so Andrew's mother gave him a computer game, so that was one, and $10. And his aunt gave him two computer games and $5. The expression x plus 10 plus 2x plus 5, where x represents the cost of each game, so x represents the cost of the game, can be used to represent Andrew's birthday gifts. So it says, what is the coefficient of the term 2x? So it's asking you, what is the coefficient? Coefficient means the number that's before the, the x. So the coefficient would be 2. How many terms are in the expression x plus 10 plus 2x plus 5? Well, let's go ahead and get our handy dandy highlighter again and just circle those so that we know which ones they are. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4 different terms. And just to piggyback on that idea, I want to ask you which one, um, which terms right here are going to be like terms. Well, we can see that x and 2x both have an x on them. So x plus 2x will give you 3x, right, if you have 1x and 2x, because we don't ever see it as 1x. We're going to just see it as x, so you don't want to have it written as 1x. So then what are we left with? We're left with, let's change colors so that we can show you. We're left with 10 and 5. So 10 plus 5 is going to, of course, give you 15. So then your final answer here, if you were to combine all of these and simplify them, would be 3x plus 15. So you can just add that off to the side. 
All right, now we're on textbook page 496. So you want to turn the page, make sure that you're on textbook page 496. And it says to simplify expressions with one variable. It says to simplify an algebraic expression, use properties, remember those properties we worked on, to write an equivalent expression that has no like terms and no parentheses. Hmm, no like terms, that means we're going to have to combine them like we did in that previous example just on the last page. So for the example here, it says 3 plus 3 equals 2 times 3 or 6. X plus X equals 2X. So let's go ahead and look at our first real example down here. Let me go ahead and change colors. It says to simplify the expression 4 times 6X. So as you can see, they've written 4 times 6X. But I want you off to the side to write 4 times 6X because that's what you were given originally. Equals. Now you have to write an equivalent expression. So the first one is going to be 4 times 6 times X. Sorry, I'm a little squished there. And then you want to think back to your properties, and you want to remember that the associative property, remember it doesn't matter which group of friends you associate with, the associative property says that 4 times 6 can be grouped together times X. So all you did was flip-flop them. You switched the order. Then 4 times 6 is going to give you 24. And then 24 times X will just be 24X. So that's what they want you to do for the problems A, B, and C. Go ahead and pause the video now and work through problems A, B, and C. All right, welcome back. So for A, you can see that the problem is 3 times X times 11. So again, we're just going to use the associative property here to regroup. And when we regroup, we're going to have 3 times 11 times X, just like we did in that last example. Sorry, that's a... Woo. Times X. Um, so that's what we did in the last problem. We're not finished yet because we actually have to continue to simplify the problem. 3 times 11 is 33 times X. And then our very last step would be to get the 33X. So for A, you should have 33X. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a little squiggly here. All right, and now for the next problem, um, we started with X plus X plus X. So X plus X plus X. So now when we have x plus x plus x, all we're going to do is add those three x's together. So x plus x is 2x, plus one other x is going to give you 3x. And that's really all there is for that problem. So we'll draw another squiggly line. And let's go ahead and highlight what our answer should be. So for this one, 33x was our answer. For b, 3x was our answer. And now let's go ahead and take a look-see at C. So for C, you have 7x. Whoops, I mean, meant to do that in black. <laughs> so for C, you have 7x plus 8 plus, plus x. So remember, they don't want you to have any like terms. So in order to get rid of those like terms, the first thing that you're going to want to do is combine that 7x and the x. So we know that 7x plus x can be put together plus 8. Whoops, that's an 8. Then in our next step, we're actually going to go one step further. 7x plus x is going to give you 8x plus 8. And, and you can't combine 8x plus 8, just like I told you in the last video, because the 8x has that x, and that makes it an apple. And then the 8 is just an orange. So these are the three answers that you should have for a, b, and c. All right, now we're still looking at textbook page 496, and you're still writing along with me as I go. So let's go ahead and change to a color here. Three friends will pay X dollars each for admission to the museum, plus one dollar each to view the mummy ex exhibit. So the first thing, we have three friends. The second thing, they're going to pay X dollars each for admission, and they're going to also pay one dollar each for the mummy exhibit. And so now it says a fourth friend, uh-oh, now we have a, no, a new friend in there. So a fourth friend will pay admission, so remember that X, but will not view the mummy exhibit. Mmm, it's getting trickier. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost. All right, so let's go ahead and stop for a second to think about what we've written. 
All right, so the first thing that you want to attack is the three friends that'll pay X dollars. So you know that you have three friends and they're going to pay X dollars. You should be writing this off to the side just like I'm doing. And they're also going to pay one dollar each to see the mummy exhibit. So that's the three friends, right? And then, let's see. And then the part that you may have forgotten is that this fourth friend here, see that fourth friend, will pay admission. So remember, what was it that stood for admission? Admission was X dollars, correct? And actually, I should not have written the dollar sign right there. So let me take that out. So it should be, let me just rewrite. X plus one plus X. And remember, this is that fourth friend. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and erase that now, but that was just to let you know that that was for the fourth friend. All right, so now we've got an expression, but it's not in simplest form yet because we have some like terms. So we're gonna think back to the distributive property that we just learned in the last section. We're gonna think, okay, let's distribute out this three first. So three times X is gonna give us, ooh, hate that color, hold on. Let's try that again with a different color. All right, three times X is gonna give us three X plus, because remember there's the plus sign right there, three times one gives us three. Now that we've distributed the three to the X and the one, we can just leave the parentheses out, but we can't forget to add that plus X. So then we have plus X. So that's what we learned in the last section. Now we're gonna combine what we learned in the last section with this section. So in this section, it talked about combining like terms. And remember, like terms are terms that have the same variable. So this is a like term, and this is a like term. So if you have 3x plus x plus 3, then you're actually going to have 4x plus 3. And that is going to be your final answer for your problem. Because you can't add the 4 and the 3 together, because 4x is like apples, because it's got a variable on it. What I'd like you to do now is try D on your own and pause the video, and when I go to the next slide, I will go over D. All right, so now you've had a chance to try D. For D, it says to write and simplify an expression for the total cost of six friends now to go to the museum. Remember, the museum was X dollars. If only four friends view the mummy exhibit, and remember, the mummy exhibit was one dollar. So let's just write that off to the side. So the mummy was one dollar and remember the museum itself was X dollars. Sorry if you can't read that let me we'll just call that X. There we go. All right so now they want you to find out what the cost of six friends would be. So how does that change the problem? Well remember that's sort of that's the that's what we're going to be distributing out. So six friends is going to go on the outside of the parentheses. Then inside the parentheses is going to be the cost of the museum, right? So it says write some for the total cost of the six friends to go to the museum. So we're going to do six friends times X, but if only four friends view the mummy. So, okay, hold on a second. What we really need to do, let's take a step back here. We need to think about how only four friends are going to be, whoops, Four friends are going to be the cost of the museum plus the one dollar for the mummy exhibit, right? But we still have those two extra friends. So this is the museum and this is the mummy. But we can't just leave it at that because we've got four friends, X plus one. But we also need to add in how many total friends did we have? We had six. So those six minus the four that are going to see the mummy, that leaves us with two friends that are not gonna see the mummy exhibit. So two friends, it's just gonna be two of the X's because remember, X is the museum admission and two is the number of friends. Because you have the four friends here and the two friends here. So that gives you a six total friends. So now let's go ahead and Go on, to, let me see if I can erase some of this. Yeah, let's erase the bottom part here. So now we'll work from this problem that we have right here. And we will say, 
let's distribute. So 4 times x should give you 4x plus, remember that comes from right there, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2x. And remember, that was what we learned in the last section when we learned about the distributive property. And then in this section, we learned about combining like terms. So 4x and 2x are like terms. So 4x plus 2x is going to give you 6x. And then you can't forget about this guy up here, the 4. So 6x plus 4. So our final expression is going to be 6x plus 4. So this concludes our section, um, part one, for chapter six, lesson seven. And this is just, again, part one, so you want to be sure to tune in for part two on equivalent expressions. You should have everything written that I wrote here inside of your textbook.